Hi there folks, my name is Carl Spencer and I'm a technical consultant here at Man and Machine. And today I want to focus on or look at CAD layer naming conventions. Um, so I'm basically going to focus on AutoCAD and Revit applications as it's an important factor when producing drawings or exporting drawings from your models. Now before I start, I want to highlight that I'm focusing on the UK market here as a layer naming may not be the same in other countries where you are based. So just bear that in mind um, as I go through these things. So now if you're implementing, for example, BIM on a project and in accordance with ISO 19650, you'll notice that the National Annex and A for the UK region under section 2.2 uh, is noted that container naming for CAD layers is documented in BS EN ISO 13567-2, which is a standard I'm going to focus on today. Now, before we get started, I wanted to give you a bit of background on layer naming standards. So we start off with BS 1192 Part 5 1998, which was replaced with uh, BS 1192 in 2007, which has since been withdrawn as part of the ISO standards. We also have this document here on the right hand side, which is the AEC UK protocol for layer naming, which is aligned to BS1192 and Uniclass. Although this is a few years old, it may be useful to you, but can now be out of date and possibly would need a review. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to focus on this standard here. As part of this, there are a number of mandatory fields and some optional fields. But to keep it simple today, I'm just going to focus on the mandatory fields that were required. So first of all, we have the agent. The agent is the organisation responsible for the data, and that has two alphanumeric characters. The element is the physical part associated with the national classification system and that has six alphanumeric characters and we'll go into that in more depth shortly. And then the final one is the presentation which has particular elements as part of a drawing or model and again that has two alphanumeric characters. So if we look at the agent responsible think of this as the discipline that's setting this out. Now there isn't anything set out in this standard so I would recommend looking at the disciplines noted in uh, 19650 Part 2 National Annex. You can utilise that list there or extend the list as further as you need to. So these will be the specifics, maybe it's an architect or an engineer. Then the second part you'll see is element. Now in the UK here our national standard for classification we use is set out by the MBS and is Uniclass 2015 which I'll go into a little bit more shortly. And then the final part will be the presentation characters. So I've listed some on screen just to demonstrate. So for example, whether it's a model, whether it's text, hatching, dimensions, or other elements, there is a number of presentation characters listed in the standard you can use. So if we take this into context, we need to set out our layers and translate them into our... So if we take this into context, once we've translated what the layer namings are, we then need to populate both our AutoCAD and Revit templates. Let's switch over and have a look how we do this. So here we go, we have on the left hand side the MBS website which you can go to to get Uniclass codes. Now there is a search engine on here where you can search for keywords and it will bring you up the titles uh, appropriately or you can simply go and download all the tables in an Excel format. What I would recommend is signing up um, to the Uniclass um, email notifications so you can get notified when updates are and you can get more information from here. I'll put this down in the description below so you can access this link directly. So what you'll see on the right hand side I've just done a, a small spreadsheet just to help and show you this. So we need to understand what the agent or who the agent is, what the element is and what the presentation is and I put the description in the end and you'll see why in a moment. So we can go down the list and you can see we can select the relative um, agent who we need to specify. I'm going to call them discipline because I prefer that naming. Now, if you're doing just box standard CAD layers, which you need, for example, for your drawing sheet or your viewport, so forth, I'm going to use my Z as that code here. Now, as we go along, obviously, the element, this is where we'll go into our Uniclass table here to select. And then we've got the presentation styles. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set out some simple layers. So I've done a list already here, which you'll see. And you'll see why it comes out now. So first of all, I'm using the Z, as you can see here. I'm going to use my Uniclass code. So I need to find the Uniclass code. So if it's going to type into the search engine here, you'll see it comes up with the viewports. So there's the next code, i.e. the Uniclass. Now, I think to note here, it says six characters. But as you can see, that code is over six characters because it's got two Z's underscore, and then the numbers and underscore and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it as it is um, so I don't try and alter it and try and figure out how I can fit it in because you might get some codes which are smaller or larger. Um, I think this is better to keep it as it is. Now I've used the letter O here and if I switch back you'll see this is taken for my other graphics. And then I put a short description at the end because that doesn't really make sense if we have it like that. So if I switch into AutoCAD so you'll see in AutoCAD here, this is a completely fresh drawing. I can go into my layer manager and I can start a new layer. I need to then start to type in the layer name appropriately to what I'm specifying. And I'll just double check so I get this right. So it's 20 underscore 95 oh, And then I can say at the end, put in viewport. So all I need to do is make sure the fields are selected in here. So for example, I get the, you know, the right color line weights, whether the, the actual um, layer is going to be printable and so forth. So in here, I know this is going to be blue, so I'm going to select the blue and now that'd be correct. Now, bear in mind, you're going to have a lot of layers that you might need. So you'll have to just go in and set this up in your templates. It will be a lot of work in this at the beginning, but once you've done that, it's only going to save you time um, over the life cycles of projects you're working on. So here's an example template that I've already set up. You'll see here there's a huge list of layers that I've already created and I've already set out the colours, line styles and so forth that they're going to need. Now, if I want to take these out, for example, I've just shown you in Excel. If I want to take those in Excel, I've just used my left click to select at the top using my shift button and left click at the bottom. And then this is simply doing the control key and C to copy. If you go into your Excel spreadsheet, again, I just have another sheet on here, you'll see what I mean. And do control V, it will populate it into the sheet for you. Then all you need to do is just go in and tidy up the size of the, the um, fields in here, the rows or the columns uh, to the appropriate size that you need to. And then there you go, you've got them in there. If we talk about Revit, a similar thing applies. Now, obviously, when you're modeling in Revit, you're not applying a layer, you're putting the, uh, the elements in there. So if it's a wall, it puts it on a wall uh, family. And then obviously, when you export it out, it does the layers. So if we go to our file here and we go export and I'm going to come down to the export settings here. So we've got the setup. So we can go in and set the setup in there. Now what this allows us to do, first of all, if you'll see here, we have a drop down. Now, as you'll probably find every time you go in, it defaults to the AIA standard. Um, now in the UK, that's not our standard here, there specifically. The standard I'm working to is the one I selected here, which is the ISO 13567. Now you'll see here we do have some existing British standards um, that were available before. You can load your settings in from a file as well if you've got me a text format. So again, rather than go through all in detail, I've set a couple of things up already. So if I just minimize these down here, you will see what I mean. So I'm going down to the bottom here. You'll see I've got viewports. There's my viewport layer, levels, grid lines, uh, sorry, grid heads, and there's the, the colors. So literally when I export, it should be on the right layer and also look correct because it's got the right color. I have done a few others there, which you'll see in a moment. So I can literally just go in, again, go to the file, go to the export, up to CAD formats and select my DWG. And then simply you'll see here, because I've set a setup, it's remembered all the settings because I could have multiple different settings for different clients if I need to. Um, I can go in and change these little dots here. If I click next, it's going to go through the process of setting them out. Now, I've already got a file which I've exported there because I've just been testing this beforehand. I didn't want to spend too long um, demonstrating it to you guys. So if I go back in, I'm just going to specify that one, click OK, click Yes. So you'll see I've just overwritten that and then I'm going to go into AutoCAD itself. Uh, I'm going to go and open that file. So what I'm going to do is just show you what I exported before with um, all the standard settings. And you'll see if I not say open that, if I just zoom to extents, you can see the layers of the border are in um, colours that I didn't want. So, for example, the text is in, in the magenta colour. 
So again, if I open up the other file, um, you'll see there'll be a difference now. So I've gone up this one and again, zoom to extents. You'll see the text is displaying in, um, in, in black because obviously it's specified as a white color and the same with the outline of the, the title sheet and so forth. Now in the drawer in itself, if I go in, I just set my LT scale so you can see everything scaled okay. So you'll see in here I've set my dimensions to red, my text to red, my grid lines to um, cyan, uh, the same applies to my sections and elevation markers. So again just ensuring that's in your template, make sure it all sets out, you can then comply to the specific standards. I hope you found that really useful, uh, thanks very much, take care. Thank you.